Today, I'm going to be talking about some grass, some shrooms, and some alcohol. No, I'm not going to be talking about what all of you guys are thinking. <laughs> but I am going to be talking about science. Before I talk about science first, I just wanted to mention my grandfather. This is me and him outside of Notre Dame, which is his alma mater. And I just wanted to do this really quick because he is my inspiration for science, and so I wanted to thank him for that. Now let's get to what I actually am going to talk about today. So can I get a show of hands for those who know what cellulosic ethanol is? Yeah? Awesome. Well, for those of you who don't know, cellulosic ethanol is the future. And I say this because, as you guys all probably know, we are dealing with the hardships of gasoline right now. Gasoline is very expensive, and it's becoming pretty scarce, and so it's impacting a lot of us. So what we have to do is we have to find new ways to supplement gasoline. A lot of people are doing this through ethanol. Ethanol can be used to power our cars. Right now, America's using corn to make ethanol. Why would we use corn to make ethanol? Don't we eat corn? So that's not very smart. So what we can do is we can find something else to make ethanol. A lot of people are proposing cellulose. Cellulose is a huge sugar found in every plant in the entire world. Cellulose is the leaves that you guys just raked last weekend. Cellulose is the branches that fell off your trees. Cellulose is the grass clippings that you guys mowed. So right now, cellulose is a developing method. So in the eighth grade for the science fair, I do science fair annually since the sixth grade, Mr. Brent Jones and I did research on cellulosic ethanol for the eighth grade science fair. Mr. Brent Jones was the STEM department chair in eighth grade. I'm a sophomore, but we did research comparing corn ethanol to cellulosic ethanol. The results that I found were that cellulosic ethanol was so much more efficient than corn ethanol. So it kind of motivated me to keep on going with this. For freshman year science fair research, I wanted to keep on going with cellulosic ethanol. Cellulosic ethanol is wasted in the form, or just cellulose. It's wasted in the form of 102.5 million dry tons of plant waste that can all be used to make ethanol. 102.5 million tons, that's 293 Empire State Buildings stacked on top of each other. And all of that is being wasted. This is partially because the process kind of wards people off. So you can see here there's this big elaborate flow chart. All it's trying to say is four things. First, the plant needs to be degraded. Cellulose is bound to a lot of very tough, fibrous, stubborn chemicals. In order to free the cellulose to use it for ethanol, you have to blast it with hot acid, and that's, that doesn't really appeal to a lot of people. After that, you have to use enzymes. These enzymes are going to break cellulose. Cellulose is comparable to beads on a string, and you can't turn cellulose into ethanol, so you have to break the individual beads off the string. Those beads are glucose molecules, which can then be fermented by yeast to make ethanol. The most difficult part of the pretreatment process, or the ethanol process, is the pretreatment process. The pretreatment process is getting rid of those chemicals that surround cellulose, namely lignin. Lignin is a very long, rigid chemical, and so, again, you have to blast it with hot acid. The lignocellulosic complex, which is what you're seeing right now, is very similar to Christmas morning. I say this because imagine yourself running down the stairs. You see your present under the tree. You run over to your present, but it's tied so tightly that you can't open it. You know there's something awesome that's going to be down there. You've been waiting for months, but you can't open it. And this is very similar to the lignocellulosic complex. Then on top of that, there are additional processes, which I briefly mentioned, in order to create glucose molecules. And then you start getting to your ethanol production process. So as you guys probably heard, it's a little long, right? 
So we got to shorten that down. I just didn't know how to do this, though. That's, that was the problem. My idea came in Mexico, Cancun, Mexico, over spring break of 2013. And there, I visited a mushroom farm. And at this mushroom farm, I, the central exhibit was about the oyster mushroom. And the oyster mushroom, it had this information board. The oyster mushroom, you know, it's a degrader of plants. And it does this by eating lignin. And I was like, that's my science fair project. That's what I'm going to do. And I got so excited, right? So then I, I went back to my hotel. And then I started researching. And this is so much cooler than I had originally thought, right? This oyster mushroom, it naturally eats lignin. That's what it was made to do. We don't have to use hot acids anymore. On top of that, it not only eats lignin, it also turns cellulose into glucose naturally. Again, awesome. So it melds two of these ethanol production processes into one. So now that I started to solidify my project, I started contacting professors. I got a lot of rejection, but one of the professors who met with me was Dr. Thomas Mitchell. Dr. Thomas Mitchell is the Associate Professor of Plant Pathology at The Ohio State University, and he agreed to meet with me over a breakfast at Bob Evans. At Bob Evans, I enjoyed wonderful blueberry crepes, but I also got to talk with Dr. Thomas Mitchell, and there he said that he would provide lab space for me and teach me how to do research. And so there I realized that this breakfast, you know a lot of people say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, right? <laughs> this breakfast was not only the most important meal of the day, it was also the most important meal of my life. With Dr. Thomas Mitchell, I grew this oyster mushroom on some grass that was growing outside of my yard. And over the course of seven months, I facilitated a process that would allow me to create ethanol from this grass. Hence my title, some shrooms plus some grass and some alcohol. So at the end of my research, I learned that creating ethanol from grass in the scenario of my research, was 50 times more efficient than creating ethanol using that hot steaming acid process. I was so psyched. So again, I start doing more research and I learn that with these, with the mushroom, it emits enzymes, particularly lignanases and cellulases, very creative names, obviously, but they're very important. Lignanases oxidize this huge lignin molecule that's binding cellulose, right? And it turns it into simpler chemicals like water and carbon. And then simultaneously these cellulases come in and they, they, turn, they pick off the beads on the string, making glucose molecules all at the same time. With all this research, I got the opportunity to present at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair in Los Angeles, California. Here, I was among some of the smartest people of this generation. They are doing research. I'm telling you guys, it's going to change the world eventually. And so I didn't really feel like I was part of an international fair, right? I kind of felt more like I was in a, I got selected, I guess, into a union of scientifically oriented people that I felt were gonna change the world. And this was life changing for me. And it really encouraged me to pursue science, keep on going with it. And so I intend to surge ahead with this biofuels process. Right now, I'm working on, rather than making three steps, you know, we have three steps right now from my research. I wanna make it into one step. Literally, we can turn this, this grass, into ethanol, literally from grass to gas. And so, I hope that with my research, I can help extend the longevity of our beautiful planet Earth and help reduce some of the 700 billion that we spend on fossil fuels annually. Just remember that all of this was due to some shrooms, some grass, and some alcohol. Thank you very much.